Well, here it is, Friday morning. Got the day right. That's pretty good. Um, we are having a special today because this week it kind of got screwed up starting on Monday when I was away. Um, on Wednesday, I managed to finish all of the sewer tile work that I needed to finish, which was uh, kind of a surprise, really, because there was a there were a lot of walls and sewer tiles, and they needed a fair amount of detailing and as much as I detail things. Um, so I took a poll, and the result was unanimous. One person expressed an opinion. And we are going to have Submarine Wednesday on Friday today. This is the Friday edition of Submarine Wednesday. If you watch football, it's kind of like Sunday night football Thursday edition, except this isn't football, this is a submarine model. And this isn't Thursday or Sunday, this is Submarine Wednesday special Friday edition. Um, if you might recall, last Wednesday, things went poorly, and I got nearly nothing done, as has been typical since I've been working on this submarine, but it went really quite badly um, in that an important part of the submarine didn't fit. So let me, let me unveil the status of things here. This is my high-tech dust cover, right, because this stuff sits around and down here in the basement for a week between uh, streams so what we've got here so far is practically nothing of the submarine you can see in the scheme of things there is a whole lot of submarine that that isn't anything yet um, but what happened was that this part which is see where the yeah, camera is. I have to move to my left a little bit, I guess. This part, which is the top of the sail here, the conning tower, it didn't fit. And when I put it on, these tubes were too long. And I'm not sure why that was. But uh, yesterday, in anticipation of not having any idea how I was going to fix them, really, I got a file out and successfully we moved a little bit more than a 32nd of an inch from the tops of each of these three tubes. And now, making sure it still does today as opposed to just yesterday. Um, now it, um, come on, now it fits there. See around the, around this side, how it um, fits across the top. This has been primed and the rest of it hasn't. That's why there's a color difference. So this needs to be cemented on in a way that allows the periscopes and these things here, periscopes and radio antenna and snorkels to slide up and down freely. So that's one thing I'm going to do today is cement that on, hold it gently, but firmly while the cement sets. Okay, <clears throat> get that done. And then this part, this very simple looking bit might actually be finished. Yeah, this way back a little bit, there we go. Uh, the other thing I'm hoping, well, yeah, there's lots of little junk, okay? These tubes glue into the bottom bit here, and they show on the bottom, so I filled these in with some plastic putty. I'm going to sand that down. It's going to get sanded. Thing, yeah, nice. Those whole things just aren't, aren't attached where they need to be. I need to re look at that. I, I knew there was always something, right? There had to be something. Um, so I need to re cement that right there, that little bit, so that it actually stays in place. Wow. You know? So yeah, for those of you who thought that things, like me, that things were going to go okay today, um, 
No, not so much. Anyway, I need to sand that down and then paint the bottom green again because that should... <laughs> I'm not going to flip this up. Um, what that should do is make that look like one smooth surface. We'll see if that actually works or not. Wow, how did that, how did this, how did this come undone? How in the world did this whole thing come undone? Both pieces. It's just all, all, um, wrong now. Mm-hmm. Yep, yep, yep. This submarine is cursed. I am absolutely convinced of it, that this submarine has been cursed. And, yeah. So that's going to have to be done probably sooner than later. Okay, well, I was hoping that I didn't have to do that, because I was hoping that whatever I had cemented in would actually just stay put. But no such luck. Wow, just amazing. So the other thing I was hoping to do after now I'm going to be spending way more time doing things I wasn't planning to do. No, I don't think anything is going to go okay on this sub, no matter how simple it looks or whatever, you know. So this is this is one side of the hull. This is the other, if you might recall. Last Wednesday, these torpedo racks were totally misbehaving and sagging, and it looks like they're they're mostly okay now. So this is supposed to be a very simple thing, okay? And and it's one of the first things I'm going to do today, and then do this other thing that I was not planning to do at all. Is that this these go together. Okay, like this little pin goes in this little hole here. That's the idea. And then so on all the way around up to this little pin. And they're supposed to fit nice and tightly. Right, without breaking anything off. And so far, I tested this yesterday. Believe it or not, I did. I tested this yesterday and it worked. And, um, yeah, it isn't right now. They're not going together very well. Hmm. Anyway, yeah, um, they're just, it's just not tight like it should be. See if it's acceptable. I think it's not really, there's a gap there. What I'm going to do is, um, see that one goes in nicely and that's nice and tight, right? And then it goes around and then this one is misbehaving. I'll make that pin a little bit smaller by very carefully filing it up in the back and the top. Okay, well, having these parts come unglued. I think this is pretty good. I, I expected this to all go very smoothly. I was going to show you how things were fitting together, how nicely things were working after I fixed them, I thought, yesterday. You know, kind of uh, off camera. And then I find that um, not so much. It is. The submarine is cursed. It just is, period.
So if I can get these parts to fit together nicely, if they play well, you know, with me today, if they behave sort of, I'm going to cement them. And while I have the cement out, I will go out of my way to re-cement this and hopefully it'll stay in place. And I want to do that before I... Um, sand it. Maybe, maybe I should go ahead and sand it while it's still apart. Okay, so this is how these pieces fit together. <laughs> That's the whole forward part of the submarine. That's the uh, torpedoes torpedo room. Okay, if I can be successful in cementing this, that's how it's going to look. And it will go here into that part right up here. And then this, you might remember this from many years ago. Um, this is the forward bulkhead that ends up going here like that. But there's a lot of detail on here. So I am making an effort to paint the dials and the junction boxes and things. And I'll work on this a little bit later and we'll see how that goes. Um, and then the, the gray parts here will be painted the same green color. So I'm going to not touch this because it's actually kind of holding. And when I get, it, get to it, I'm going to be applying the cement around the outside where it doesn't show and then I hold it firmly over for two or three minutes while I talk about, I don't know, Mapo maybe, because that's a thing du jour. And um, yeah, that's what I'll be doing. And then just give you a preview. This bulkhead then is the forward bulkhead of the restroom, the mess hall and just a belt tank and i haven't painted these yet because these little holes in here um, i want to fill those in like i did the bottom here with uh, plastic filler and then uh, sand those down before i paint it so that they don't show okay that's uh, the intent anyway What I'm hoping to accomplish today is complete this, fill these in. I'm going to do this early on, so hopefully this will dry and I can get to it by the end of the stream today, maybe. Um, and I intended to finish this. This is going to take a little bit more work than I expected because, as, as you saw earlier, these detached. And now, yeah, see, they just they just pulled away. So I need to pull them away, get a little bit of cement in there, right against the wall, for both of these. Hmm. Okay, so essentially this whole thing has come undone. I'm not sure what happened if, if there was just not enough cement done to begin with. Everything was nicely lined up. No, nothing is. Stuff's rotating. It shouldn't. Holy cow. I thought the only problem... I thought the only problem was that these were too tall. But apparently not. The ball a problem. Um, yeah, it's one thing to put the cement on when these pieces are out. It's another thing to put the cement on when these pieces are sort of somewhat attached. Okay, um, I still am going to do that first because I want the cement to set so that I can fill those holes in okay and let it dry so I'm going to get my I haven't done a flip yet okay 
Um, let me flip the plastic uh, putty. All set for wonderful things to be moving along very quickly today, and now they're not. Um, This is going to be this was going to be an unusual event. Submarine day moving along quickly, showing all sorts of see there's the other thing, this is a chronic problem, okay, is that there's um, a little bit of a plug in here. I'm not sure why or how, but there is a little bit of a plug in the nozzle. I think that was there at the very beginning when I bought this, when I first opened it. Um, broke the whole thing apart so that I could get to it and drill it out. And I think what it is, is that uh, that plug is actually some of this like polystyrene plastic that got in there somehow and it keeps dissolving and um, you know that it has um, it opened up when you can smell it I'm just going to use this nozzle and apply this directly to joint here. Hold it for a couple of minutes. Not because the aroma is very strong. And after this appears to be holding, seems to be the, the welded joint seems to be uh, holding. I'm going to move on to fixing the sail by very carefully applying cement in a couple of places and then holding that in place while the cement sets. And while I'm holding this, because so far, once I got the pin fixed and it's set in place, I'm going to celebrate this because so far this is the one thing I was planning on that has not messed up yet. Yep, pretty happy about that. So let's see, um, I'm going to count down silently should we count down together from a hundred that would fill the time wouldn't it um to count down uh, two minutes 120 15 99 so I could just watch the clock. <laughs> hadn't thought of that. It's got a second hand on it, so it just needs to go around one and a half times. No, you can't see the clock, so you can't watch the second hand tick slowly around, counting down the seconds of the stream. Yep, one minute and five seconds to go. 
So yeah, I'm holding this firmly, and hopefully this this will uh, form a solid weld. And then I'm going to put little dabs of that plastic filler on the holes on the other side of the bulkhead. And then I'm going to go back to the sail, the conning tower, the part of that submarine that has just been one nasty bit after the other. And I think I'm going to go ahead and sand it down the... I mean, it's already detached. It's already fallen apart. <laughs> so if I can kind of hold it in place while I do some gentle sanding, I'm going to sand the bottom where I had put the plastic down before. Hi! Thanks for joining in. Um, you are seeing Submarine Wednesday on Friday. Um, the Wednesdays for the last month or so, I've been working on this vintage 1960s Renoir submarine, a replica of the prototype. The very, very first missile launching submarine ever, the George Washington. Renoir made these in the 60s, and so did I. I made one of the originals, and now I'm reliving my childhood by uh, basically rebuilding this submarine. And you and it's been going very badly very poorly i have accomplished almost nothing in a month of wednesdays and was going to have a very good stream today in which i was going to accomplish quite a lot like moving on from um the first and second pages of the instruction sheets there's like 14 of them so there's a long way to go um i was going to be moving right along, picking out all of the pieces for the next deck, maybe the, even the next two decks. But as it turned out, the thing that I thought I had fixed yesterday ended up actually breaking um, some of the stuff I had done a week ago when things went very badly. So the, the conning tower is turning into a nightmare. Uh, this thing I am holding which is the torpedo room. See it? Okay. The torpedo racks. And they're sagging still a little bit, but, you know, that should be up higher, but it's not too bad. Um, this, this was also uh, a chore. Not so much the painting part. Painting the bunks was a pain. But the torpedo racks just cement in, in, they're not held on very well. They're sort of, and they're not even cantilevered. So that was kind of, that was difficult. Is this not adhering? There's this right here, as I'm squeezing this, okay, this is solid, but there's a gap here. And that should have been very solidly welded using this wonderful cement stuff. And it isn't, so I'm going to have to hold it yet even longer. Use sparingly. Yeah, that wasn't sparing. Um, okay, so after I'm done holding this for another two minutes now, since it didn't hold, I'm going to use this little, this plastic putty, show it to you. See these, these are little holes here where the pins come through from the other side. Is I'm going to fill those in with this plastic putty and let it set so that I can sand it down so that when I paint these walls, especially this one up on top here, um, those won't show. At least that's the theory, is that this will fill in, be hard, be sanded down, and uh, won't show. And after I sand those, then I can paint this bulkhead. There are three decks. This is the restroom. Those are actually toilets and toilet paper rolls. Um, and then a deck comes right across the top of this thing. And there's a bit over there that holds it up. There's a floor there. 
and then there's a floor here and this is part of the bunk and mess hall so this is going to be painted a light color like uh ivory or something because bathrooms are always kind of light and this according to the chart the color chart um Yeah, do you like the miniatures? Yeah, I'm probably going to be going back to painting miniatures on Monday. But I'm indulging myself with this submarine thing. Okay, so this is now taken. I expected this to have taken the first 10 minutes of the stream. And now it's a half an hour in and all I've done is anyway yeah and the next thing I'm going to do is here these tubes that you see those get cemented into the bottom deck and the bottom deck uh, shows through into the deck below so if you look you shouldn't really be able to see it but you might I mean as I filled that in with the plastic putty I'm gonna sand that down and then repaint this green but the disaster du jour is that these came unglued. I mean, they look like they're in there pretty solidly. I was certainly fooled by that, but those aren't actually cemented in. So I'm going to try to get a little bit of cement in, especially under this bottom one. We'll hold it in. And then the thing that really went badly, very, very badly last week, Wednesday, was that the top sail didn't fit. Uh, because these tubes are a little too long, so I filed them down so it does fit. And I thought all I needed to do today was just cement that top. But no, I need to fix all the rest of this as well. And these edges look a little scabby. Those get painted this dark gray. So there will be actually a little bit of painting on relaxing painting today. Um, hopefully, eventually. Okay, so this seems to be holding a little better now. I'm going to set this down on camera and I'm going to apply this little little bits of this plastic putty into the holes. I'm going to put, I need to fill the hole. I don't think it shrinks, but just in case it does, I want to make sure that there's enough so that I can sand it down. So you know, there, fill that in. This in, yeah, this in. Doing this because I'm attending to many of the details I never attended to when I built this back. I was like, yeah, shit. Probably I was like in sixth or seventh grade. This hole here is a puncture from the other side. It wasn't a, it wasn't an intentional hole like the other side. Anyway, this stuff this stuff will sand down pretty easily, so that you know it's there's way too much on here right now, and I, I'm not going to bother smoothing it out because I'll be sanding that. That will sit for the rest of the stream, and then we'll see whether or not um, it has set enough by later in the stream that I can uh, sand it down and paint. We'll find out. I'm going to set this off to the side in a way that is hopefully safe. This little bit is kind of cool. There's a ladder in there. That's the escape hatch that leads from the torpedo room out the top of the uh, submarine. Okay, so now... <sighs> now what I need to do is basically disassemble what I had assembled before, because this... No, maybe it will. Now it's kind of holding. I don't understand. I'm, you know, as long as it's 
as long as it's holding, I'm just not going to mess with it. I could put a little bit of cement down here, but I don't want it to show. Okay, so I'm going to take a chance now. Taking a chance. Take off my glasses so I can see up close. And what I'm going to be doing is um, sanding down this plastic putty that I had put on here yesterday. Yeah. That's sandable. I am sanding it and it is not really, this paper isn't working. So I will get a different kind of uh, grit here. works any better I mean it, it is it has been sanding just this tiniest bit I thought this would really go fast but it's not and I'm not sure it's even working This was supposed to sand down, make a nice, smooth, even surface. And even though this stuff has been setting here all day since yesterday afternoon, it seemed to have hardened. Well, anyway, it's going to get as good as it's going to get. But I need to get this off here, otherwise it won't be smooth. I'm covering some of the under layers of paint. I'm getting some of the green off. And then it was brown underneath it, but that's okay. I just want to make sure that this is, that the putty, the plastic putty isn't, um, going to make it look uneven because the whole point was to make it look even and if it's not even then it misses the point. Okay. Not bad. You can't see it because I tilted it the wrong way but here we go. I think that's okay. Now I just need to clean it up somehow. Blow it off, but I'm going to have to wipe it down a little bit too. And then this is lifting up here. That needs to go down. And like I said, if I bump it, if I bump it, it's loose. But if I put it in place and I never touch it again, it should be okay. And that's the goal here. So I need to um, get a slightly damp piece of paper towel and clean up all the dust. I'm using water. 
if I used isopropyl alcohol, it would um, dissolve the paint. See that there's green on this because uh, that's paint dust. Okay, so I take a little bit of this paper towel and put it on a toothpick and reach in and clean out the dust there. All right, so what I'm seeing here is that all of these things are in the right places, okay? They're loose, they're not cemented in. If you bump them, they will come out. And the trick here is going to be to not mess with it. <laughs> I really don't want to be messing around putting more cement in if I don't have to. But I got that done, and now I want to cement on this part here. This is the part that didn't fit last Wednesday that caused all sorts of problems. And now, if it's like this, if I hold it like that, it does fit. The important part, though, is that these line up. These go into these tubes. And so I'm going to have to make sure that when I cement this, that these things, they don't have to be the right ones in the right places because they're going to come out later. But they want to, they want to be, they need to be lined up. So I'm going to put little bits of cement um, around the edges and then insert these. Make sure that they line up and they move. Right now, if it's like this, if I can get it to be like this, okay, then I will have this done. Put the cement. Um, yeah, where I did last time, right? Where the parts are not painted. I hope I can. This is the make or break. This is the make or break moment for Submarine Wednesday on Friday. This works. If I if this works, then I can go on to showing you the, the next steps. Okay. Here we go. This is the second time this is getting done. No, the third time's the charm, but I really don't want to do the third one. these also put in all six of them to make sure everything lines up
get to see how this looks. Yeah, so there. Now I just need to hold this in place. What I'm trying to do is I want this you know what I want there to not be a gap there. And to be able to move regardless of there being a gap there or not. So if it stays exactly like that, it should be okay. Very nice reason is good. So this is this. This guy fell into his little receptacle hole. There, it's moving. There are no gaps, and they're all moving. So this is exactly where I want it to stay, and I want the rest of these to stay even though they're not cemented. Okay. And then this looks a little scabby here, like I said. That's going to be painted this gray color, dark gray, and I'll be doing that a little later. There's one more thing that's going to be a little minor miracle. These down here, right down here. Um, go into tubes like this in this lower deck and it's supposed to line up. And the odds, what are the odds of that, right? What are the odds of that happening? Okay, these need to come up out of this deck has to be painted green underneath and I don't want these to be green but I want I'm gonna wait for this to uh, yeah that whole deck moves right everything is still okay everything is still okay yeah, that deck isn't supposed to wiggle like that when I move these, but that's because it's not cemented in and I'm not going to mess with it. <laughs> Ooh, yuck. Okay, there's still some dust there that needs to be cleared out. Okay, so this just needs to...
This needs to not move for a while. Yes. playing with it because I want to make sure that it's not moving. I don't know why I keep doing that. I think what I'm going to do is um, something I've done before is just to hold it we get a little let's get a little piece of tape because it, it tends to wiggle a little bit and what I want to do is you know, there's a gap there but that one will show later I'm going to see this gap along the back here. That's just going to be filled in with this putty and then sanded down so that it all looks like it's a nice smooth part of the hull. Okay, I am going to go ahead and paint the bottom green and get that done. But Let's see what that is. Is this dust? Oh. Um, yeah, okay. Um, there's still some yuck on there, some dirt. Okay, the top seems to be holding. Um... when I sanded the bottom the dust got in here To touch that up with green paint. This moved. No, come on. Okay. Well, it's not going perfectly here because uh, I'm trying to get ahead of myself a little bit, but I'm going to have to get some tape because this keeps moving up and it needs to be held down until the cement sets. So we're going to do that with some painter's tape. Be right back. If you can see what I'm talking about, but this this needs to be right here and then pulled down.
the one that keeps popping up. And this should hold with the one deck that's actually cemented in. What I try to do here is um, there's these little bits of sanding dust there that are in places that um, it's visible and I could try to paint over them but I don't want to it's like right here it's just it's just this dust so it's not like it's the paint is scraped or anything it's just that there's dust on it That seems to be holding it down. These still move. These don't because they're taped. And now I'm going to paint. Paint the bottom of this green. You're going to see some relaxing painting here. green paint. I don't need very much. I'm going to use this large brush because I want to try to avoid brush marks. Yep, they move. And I'm going to repaint the bottom here. Putty didn't really work. That is to say, it's not a smooth surface. So, that experiment, you know, just I could have just left it the way it was. Anyway, it's green again. Ah, yeah. The tape is holding this down. These guys still move. Out. I am going to set this aside somewhere. There, there's an aside. brush <sighs> yeah okay um took an hour i i had thought i would be done with all of this in less than a half hour i was going to say how am i going to fill the time well the way I'm going to fill the time is by having things go wrong. So I'm going to go back to this guy. Remember I put this putty on? No. I'm just going to try to smooth this off. Smooth this down. Hmm. 
Yeah, I think this will... After break, I'll be able to get back to this guy. This is the bulkhead. Um, yeah, that, uh, that pulled apart. Okay, well, that's the forward torpedo room. Torpedoes, bunks. These guys, I don't know, they get to sleep on top of the torpedoes. I guess that's so they're there in case they need a, need need to be needed immediately, but it's um, not where I want to be. Anyway, it looks adequate. I would say this whole thing came together with moderate difficulty, um, but it is what it is, and then this will be, um, after this is sanded and painted, inserted into the forward part of the submarine, and then this little escape hatch guy goes up here. It's kind of cool. Yeah. Um, so that's what that's going to be all about a little bit later. I'm going to set it down like that. This is, uh, these are the torpedo tubes. Torpedoes go into those. These are dials and clocks and junction boxes. And I'm going to try one thing right now. Okay. This is... I'm not sure if this is going to work, but if I, you can't see these, but there's actually not just a rim around these, but there's actually like little dials and numbers, and not numbers, but points and things. I'm thinking, how am I going to paint those? Because I really can't do that with a brush. So I'm going to try this. But I'm going, what I did is I polished this nail head so it's perfectly flat. And um, I'm going to put some Sharpie ink on it. And the reason I'm using a nail head is that I don't, I'm going to stamp this on, okay? And I don't want the dark color to get into it. So if I use a nail head, it won't, it won't depress. And it's a great idea, except it's not coming off. I don't know if it dried right away or what. Let me try this. This is a different kind of ink. I don't want to use I don't want to use um, paint because paint is too liquid. It will just drip off and and fill in. When I tested this, it actually worked. I didn't test it on that, I tested it on like, uh, just a piece of paper. Let's we'll see if this works any better. I, yeah, it kind of worked, at least on the rim. See that? Hmm. Okay, well. The other one up here and see what happens. Yeah, I need some sort of better ink on there, something that will come on. Did catch the rim of it really well, didn't it? And it came off there where I didn't want it. Well, you know, this is worth a try. I can't say that it's working terribly well. 
got the rim of the, the circle really neatly and then got onto the junction box where I didn't want the ink. I don't know. I'm not sure if paint would work. Okay, well... I think it was worth a try, but it's not... It's not working quite as well as I wanted to. Well, I got it on the junction box there. Guess I'm gonna have to repaint that. Anyway, that was an experiment. That didn't go as well as I had hoped. Well, this other thing, this is interesting. It's, it's these little conduits. It actually, it actually works on there. That tiny little fine line. Again, I'm just playing around with this to see how it to see if it works or not. And so far, it hasn't, but maybe it will. Dial again. Try it on here. Yeah, it's not catching the detail on the inside, but it's catching the, the dial pretty well. I mean, the, the rim of it. I can do to do that. This one here is going to be hard to get to. It's uh, the door is open, right? So you can't quite get to it. So if I get, if I get the black ink onto the junction box. I'm not too worried about that because um, I can just repaint it. So I'm going to try that one since I'm it's. I'm having a little bit of success with this. Not a lot, but a little bit of success. Okay. This comes off 
And this one, it actually shows some of the detail in the inside of the dial. Getting enough of it to come off onto it. Was the junction box is higher. What I need is a smaller nail head. That's kind of uh, that's kind of working. Working on the clock, too. I think I need, see that? If you get it right up, right up close, it focuses, will it focus? Yeah, maybe not. You've got the, um, the, little, the little dots on the, on the clock. But it depends on how high things are raised. Like this got, it's got the sort of the rim and the, and the little pointer. This just got the rims. But if I had like a finishing nail, a really small nail, I might be able to get it like on the inside of these. And then I need to get the... It's okay, just the way it does. Just need to touch up the, the junction box. Okay, well, this is uh, worth exploring a little further. Let's see how this is doing. That is staying in place. These guys still move. They move pretty well considering they're taped on. This hasn't moved anywhere. This whole section here is going to end up being painted green anyway. Yeah, so. It didn't get painted well when I painted it with the green. I was playing around with these dials, okay? And you can kind of see how it's sort of working. So I've got a technique that, has, that is showing some problems. This bit where I tried to 
clean up underneath here. That didn't work that well. But doesn't really show. So I guess it's not it's something I need to mess with him for. Rest it for a while yet. And so this technique of using some ink and a nail head, uh, just a piece of metal, seems to be working for these dials. The problem is that the nail head I've got. I thought it was small, but it's still, it's too big for what I'm trying to do. Um, so I need to get like a finishing nail and grind down the surface, the head of it so that it's flat. I'm going to do that a little later. Um, what I can do now is I can go back to this beast. This is the forward compartment and see how this putty is coming along. It's still kind of be sanded yet. Really? Probably the best way to do this is not so much sanding it as um, getting a really nice little putty knife and just just be patient okay so I'm gonna be patient and let this set let this set and let this set and show you what's coming up next Put this stuff out of the way okay so this is what I've accomplished since I started. I got this assembled. This is the torpedo room, the forward torpedo room, and that is now put together. And it looks like that, okay? Uh, yeah, it really does. Like a picture, huh? Yeah, pretty good, except it's got color. And I showed you the little escape hatch that goes up here. So there's that. And then this is the forward bulkhead here. And that goes in in front of it. This is going to be like one of the last pieces I'm going to do. Um, and then all of this bit, okay, that I've been showing you before that didn't fit and then I had to redo it and then it came unglued and I'm not going to try to re-glue it because it's just, it isn't going to work. Um, there's that, okay? And what's next, what's next is, if you look at the picture here, on the cover box, is this stuff here, these rooms. Okay, there's the mess deck and the bunk deck. The bunks are way down in the bottom here, and then the mess hall, and yet more bunks and a little bathroom kind of thing. Um, and then there's the control room and the control room has a huge amount of detail with all of these things that have dials and buttons and stuff on it. Uh, so that's going to be a little bit of a challenge, but what needs to be done now, and I'm going to start this is we're going to be doing an exploration of all of the parts in the box. And I'm going to be trying to find these parts. I'm not going to. I don't think I'll get into the control room yet. I want to just do, just get something started here. Um, so we've got a couple of decks. This deck goes below that deck. So it's a big assembly like this. Okay. A bunch of bunks. These bunks are a pain to paint. And if I can find all of the pieces, then I can start getting them primed to the extent possible and next Wednesday really get painting. I might even start to do some of the painting uh, without priming, like on these little chairs. These are in really, really tiny little things. 
and attempting to prime them with a spray primer, it just goes flying. It's just gone. Um, so I think I might just try to do that without priming. Then you get things like the coffee urn, you know, like that, and this huge amount of kitchen detail. So you can see, even in the picture, there's like cabinets with cabinet knobs and drawers and hanging meat and shelving and things that really should be not just painted white, like this says, white, okay, but actually detailed as well. And then there's these doors, these hatchway doors and things, and um, yeah. So what I'm going to do is next is try to find all these parts for number three. And um, put them in the tray here, because this is my parts tray. And if I can get them all, um, I will be ready to um, paint some of them, actually. But later today, um, I'm going to get these tools out of here, these parts. After break, I'm going to be able to put the stuff back together, I think. It's back in the hole, so I don't lose it. Yeah, this is actually holding this this thing rotated. One advantage of it not being cemented in is that I can put it back in the orientation that it should be in. Yeah, so let's go the direction I want, not the direction I don't want, right? There we go. As I said at the beginning of the show, this thing turned out to not be cemented in, um, as it should have been, but, oh, it's holding. I'm not going to play with it. Okay, so we'll let that set. After the break, I will be doing little things. I'm going to be painting the edges here, because the edges need to be, um, there we go. The edges need to be the same color as the cutaway. And I'm going to, on the back, where there's this gap, is I'm going to apply some of that putty, that plastic uh, putty. So that I can later just sand the whole thing down and make it look all nice. The outside of the hull will be painted this dark gray. So far none of that's moved in a bad way. So far, these two parts haven't pulled apart. So far, my experiment with the nail head actually seems to be working. It just needs to be a smaller nail head. And then I can uh, touch up the junction boxes and this thing is going to be painted that same green that everything else is. I might actually even get to that today. Um, but what I can do now in the next half hour or so is uh, before break is start to find all of all of these pieces for the mess deck and the bunk deck and put them into my parts tray get the junk out of it these are all, all sorts of little tools here. Toothpicks, tweezers, files, nails. This nail is way too big. Good. 
huh, you know, while things are setting down, let's just bump into it and knock it over. That's a good idea. Um, I'm going to put these over in the tray. I'm not painting. I'm going to need um, the exacto knife because some of these parts might still be on the trees. Now, a lot of them have been kind of knocked off, but some of them might still be on the trees. And well, they need to be cut off. Once again, what I'm doing here is getting the parts for this part of the submarine here. This part is done and needs to be inserted into the hull. This part is more or less done. And as long as I don't bump it, it will stay good. Right. And uh, there's a bunch of little parts. So I'm going to set this away under here where I will crush it with my feet. Whole pile of parts. Right up. And then one thing I can tell you, this is kind of nice, is that a lot of the chairs, it looks like maybe even all of them, are still attached. And there's five big tables and one small table. Those are still attached. So I'm going to be cutting them off back here, leaving a little bit of a prong, and then sanding that down, okay? Because I don't want to just have like a divot. Now, if you're seeing the chairs, okay, you're going to see one of the really great features of this model is that uh, the molding left something to be desired. Let's see if I can bring it up close, okay? This is how a chair should look, kind of. And these... flip for you you can see that it's all extra plastic and all of that needs to be cut away and sanded off well it looks like there are two th number 43 number 43 is um, these Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, maybe. There's fifteen of them here. Maybe some go up on the other deck. These bigger chairs. I'm gonna flip this over to the other side. Just see see what we're looking for in terms of chairs. Those must be like captain's chairs or something. Um, what number are those? They're 43A, so there's three, three of these bigger chairs here that go here. Yeah, and there's some little ones here. Anyway, yeah, there's lots of little pieces. I'm not going to cut off the 43 A's because those go to another place. But what I will be doing is cutting off one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. It looks like eleven of these little 43 chairs. In the bottom of each one, let me take one off here. Flying, right? Okay. Yeah, so you can see what I mean if you try to prime this. Okay, that will be a challenge. But there's this little pin on the bottom of each one that goes into a hole in the deck. And each one of these just has mold material all over them. 
so somehow they need to be held and cleaned off. And what I can do, this is my plan, and see if it works, is take an alligator clip like this and clip the little pin. Clip the little pin, I should be able to paint it. Right? That's the theory. And these are just really, really badly, badly molded. Anyway, that's the idea, is uh, for those tiny little chairs. And if I find all of the pieces, I might just go ahead and, uh, and if I can get these cleaned up, I might just go ahead and paint some. And then you look at the bigger chairs, you can see this, these have hideous mold marks right down the middle. This side of the chair, okay, this side of the chair is a different size from that side of the chair. Uh, it's really badly done. It's like they're not together. And so this whole thing, actually, in order to not look awful, this whole thing needs to be sanded, filed and sanded, um, because the two halves of the chairs don't match. And what I need now is a little bit of a container, because these are so tiny that unless I put them into something, I'd know that they're just going to disappear. <clears throat> I thought some of this other stuff was bad, but uh, these chairs, these chairs are very poorly made. Look at that. Look at how much mold material there is around the outside of the chairs. And then even the pin. Well, they're attached to the tree by the pin, but the pin, yeah, even these, the two sides of the chair don't match. Fortunately, they're so little, you'll hardly be able to see them inside the model, but still. So that's a, an example of the chair. I'll leave it on there. Um, this whole thing here, you'll be able to find that. It's pretty large, right? Let me rummage through the parts here. Here it is. Uh, it's warped. That's handy. So yeah, you can. I mean, you can see it. That's uh, that's pretty nasty warp. Um, and when it goes into the hull, it it there there aren't like things all along it, right? So part of the trick is going to be to uh, warm it up a little bit and somehow unwarp it. That's, that's a nice surprise. I wonder... I have another model. It's exactly the same. You know, the George Washington is actually... I'm going to um, find that and see if this identical part is in there and whether that one's warped or not. And if it isn't, I'm going to make a trade. So there's that. And then the bunk, this part here. Thing where the bunks go on, little slots. I just need to find that. This one's warped too, wherever this one goes. So this is the command. <laughs> yeah. This goes right above this one. But, nice. this is nice. This one's warped too, but in the opposite direction. Cool, huh? Maybe, and they don't cancel each other out. That doesn't work. Here it is. This is, um, this is this part here. Where the bunks go. Bunks and a staircase. And... Yeah, it's got some nasty mold marks on it. Not sure. There's a little notch, little notches on it. I think, 
Loose notches. I think the notches are designed to go in the back of the hull. There's a bulkhead on either side of it. Yeah. Numbers 51 and 52. Let me bring this up so you can watch me rummage through the box of parts, right? Yeah, look at this. So there's this this wonderful thing with these lockers on it, and the lockers have this huge indentation on it. Very, very badly done. Very badly done. So yeah, I'm definitely going to be looking through the other box um, for parts because some of these are almost unusable. This one. This is number 52. Okay, that's this one here. And the back of it has fire extinguishers on it, which is good because it's facing the kitchen or the galley. And there should be another one that's similar to that. Um, a half moon kind of thing. Rummage, rummage, rummage. Here. Yeah, there it is. That's almost certainly it. This is a bag of small, little small parts that have uh, been, that came off the trees. So there's things like, like these bunks. These are almost certainly uh, these bunks here. So I had the bag open and there's some in here. I might as well pull them out. Look at the mold marks on these. Just atrocious. I mean, Oh, there's two-sided. Nice. Yeah. There's two of them. This is probably 51 that goes here. Yeah. Yeah, that goes in the back. That's the hole here for the stair one. Is that? Are the other bunks broken off? It's one of the staircases. This here. This way. I'm going to move this up here so you can see as I kind of come up with parts where they go. So that's this thing here. Okay. This is the staircase that goes here. This is that bulkhead. This is this one. These are two of the bunks. There's another one. Eight. Don't have to take that one off. It jumped right off. There is what? Yeah, one more of those somewhere. There it is. 
So here, collectively, we have pieces for that. Okay. Uh, so that's a good thing. Got them. I want to make sure they're all usable. And these bunks are going to take a lot of work. These mold marks are bad. Uh, just all over the place. That needs to be scraped off and sanded. And then they go into these slots like this. And you know, of course they don't there. That kind of fits, right? Not very well. Back and forth, mainly because of the mold marks underneath here that keep it from going all the way down onto the surface like that. But at least this isn't too important. We oriented the right way, correct? I see you can never find your bunk. That. This is cool. So this has to go in here. And of course, there's, if you look at this, the way this model is built, okay, so those, those are fine, but there's this tiny little prong here that goes into this little hole once that mold mark thing is taken off, if you can get it to fit. And then somehow it's supposed to just hang there, right? That's going to take a little, that's going to take a little holding. This is the forward bulkhead, and it goes here. That's just... Okay, the other one is clearly number 52, because it's marked 52, that goes here. This goes here. Okay, and there's a little dotted bits here. That means that this flange is on the other side. So, if this is supposed to be on the inside here like this, right? Why did they put this here when you paint it? What is that? It's like... Can't even tell what that's supposed to be. And they have these little circular things, those drive me crazy. These circular things, which are basically flaws in the mold. I mean, that's not, this is supposed to look nice, right? So these pieces go together like this. Well, that's nice, they put little notches in here so it uh, lines up, that's kind of cool. It sort of almost works. Um, but there, these all need to be sanded out. And I can't even tell what that's supposed to be. Anyway, yeah, this is going to take a lot of prep work to get these usable. But that's the bunk room, and then the kitchen. Um, I can start finding the parts to the kitchen, the, and then I'm going to look at the seriously look at the other model to see if the floor is maybe a little less warped than that. Um, this is number forty-four, the gigantic bunk that goes here. I'm going to set this here so you can see it. I'm just going to sort of set the pieces in where they go. So as I find them, it doesn't look like there's anything more on this one.
Some torpedo tubes. Weird little pieces of things. 38. Uh huh. Okay. Why not? This tiny thing here is the copy urn. It doesn't look like it. Okay, I guess I can't tell if that's supposed to be the spigot. I guess it is as opposed to a flaw. What is the other number? You know, they. This is number 38, which is definitely that. And this is number like 105. Makes no sense. And I didn't lose it. That's pretty amazing. This coffee urn goes here. Yeah. Hatch, that's a locker. Here, I'm going to be doing a lot of muttering as I go through these parts. These are the chairs and the table, so I'm just going to set this aside because I'll have to be coming back to that as I cut those off later. I'm definitely going to need a container for some of these things. Yeah, it looks like it might be that one. Let me see. really important pieces on here there's a lot of kitchens kitchen pieces um, first of all number 41 the hams meat hanging meat that goes on the back of number 40 and that is in fact number 40 here so almost it almost kind of looks like um like that except there's this big chunk hanging there and it's badly warped of course very badly warped um fortunately it goes into two prongs here and then the meat that I just pulled off hangs on these little pins. Thirty-seven. This is thirty-seven. This has imprinted meat and some sort of like little shelves or something. So that goes there thirty seven A are shells and they go there. Library. It's pretty cool. Well, it goes in the control room. It's got all sorts of books on. Um, this is part of the kitchen. It's got condiments on it and the condiment shelf. This is number 33. 33 is here around the corner. So far we're finding parts at least. 
think we're going to find all the parts, but we'll keep looking. That's number 27. Is that part of anything here? No. Um, engine rooms. Oh, here's a little... These are little tables. Uh, 45 and 46. Got your round table. It's a special spot. So a square table. I guess it must be like a little writing desk or something that goes there. 39. Yep, that's part of it. It's a shelving unit. That goes actually on top of this next to the copy urn. Just lay it on top of it. You might have to search some of these a second time. Depends on what I find as I go through them. Then, it's a mechanical part. This is why I bought two or three kits in case I couldn't find pieces, right? Something. Yeah, it is not part of the kitchen. This is, here we go. This is, um, Look at it, all little pots and pans hanging there and cabinets. That's number 32. So that's going to go here. The other stairwell? Wow, that's almost unrecognizable given all of the the uh, mold marks on it, but that is the stairwell that goes um, right in the right behind all the tables here. There. So what am I missing? I'm missing these this these doorways. I'm missing the doorways and this one counter area here and maybe no I've got that okay so, there's one of the doorway things this is the one this is the open doors so that goes here in Okay, here it is. This is the other counter, the one that goes here. There. So it looks like what I'm missing right now is this part here. What's that doorway thing? And then I'll go back over the whole thing again to see if I got it. And that one... Is this it? Looks like it from the back. Yeah, here. It's there. Um, yeah, I'm going to seal this up now before I start losing pieces. The chairs... Okay, all these little chairs are still there, and these tables are still there. I haven't taken those off. So we're going to do a quick inventory of, of this and kind of an exploded view layout, okay? Um, this goes here. 
This is the square table. This is the round table. All right. And this very warped floor. And then there's a stairwell that goes up for some reason right behind here. This is where the small table and all the chairs go. And then in the kitchen itself, well, I'm missing one of the bulkheads. Okay, there's two. I need to find another one. Um, this is here. This, these attached here. This goes here. Goes here. The open doorways go here. I'm following this diagram here. Um, this is the main kitchen thing. This goes. If I lay them this way, this one goes here like. That and this one goes here like that. So this is the galley. It kind of encloses itself like that. Okay. And then on top of this is um, the coffee urn and this bit here. Open doorways, enclosed doorways there and there. And these are all part of the bunk room. So just going around again here, table, table, stairway, bulkhead, doors, meat, shelves, meat shelf, the three parts of the galley here, this doorway, this stuff goes on top of the raised part, and what I'm missing is 40A, which is kind of like this but smaller. A lot of missile tubes there, parts to that. These, these are the tubes. This is at least one of the tubes. Yeah, these are the tubes that go into the control room later. I'm not seeing 40A in here. chance it might be on here no just table some chairs could it possibly be this thing? didn't check the number huh, yeah it is okay um this is 40a and the back of it is like this, right? But the part that faces forward into where the bunks are, there's a clock and books and lockers. And so on the bunk deck, there's a lot of detail there. That's kind of cool. But it's going to take a good deal of work to paint it. But I didn't even think of that, but yeah, that's definitely the part. Right. So we now have all the parts for the mess deck and the bunk deck. They are all awful. I mean, they are just very, very badly molded. Um, in many ways. There's mold marks on some of them, uh, bits of the trees that need to be filed down. The floors themselves, the floor, the main floor, is very badly warped, as is the main bulkhead. Okay, 
And so during break, what I'm going to be doing is uh, checking out the other two models for these fairly large parts. The, the, the mold marks, things I can deal with, I can sand those down, you know, I can file it and sand it and get them to work and not look awful. But the warp is hard to take care of. And I'm going to have to work at that. Um, the way this mess hall is set up is that these these are actually benches. It's like picnic table style. Okay. And so when I paint the floor, the whole floor gets painted. Oh, I'm looking at the box top. Sort of this light tan color. But the benches themselves need to be a darker brown so that you can see what they are, as are the bases of the tables. And uh, it looks like I could paint that probably the same color as I paint the bunks. That's a, I think I used red brown. That's a nice color. It'll look good. And it'll match the bunks. Why not use it for that? So I've got all these parts. I'm going to put the box cover back on out of here. And it is time to take a break. I have accomplished little bits of stuff today so far. Uh, I got the forward torpedo room pretty much ready to go. And if, if this stuff on the back here can be evened out, if it's ready to be maybe sanded down, then I can actually paint this and it, once it's painted I can put it into the hull and have this bit completed. And that would be a nice accomplishment. I'd like to do that. So I'm going to try that um, and then I can put this guy in as well. The technique of using the uh, nail head with ink on it actually seemed to be working for these dials. And so I'm going to get a smaller one, a finishing nail, and attempt to use it on the, these other very hard to reach dials. Okay. And the insides of those. But it's not too bad. I need to touch up the junction boxes and then somehow paint all of this with the green color without getting it onto anything else. So that'll be kind of tetchy, and I might work on that today or not, but what I really need to be doing after the break is fixing these parts so that they're usable. Okay, and unfortunately with this model, a lot of it is not relaxing painting, but it's just kind of like, like this, like scraping off extra plastic getting out needle files and this kind of stuff <laughs> sanding and filing so that the parts work these are even worse than I feared they would be just in terms of uh, the the quality of the, of the plastic. So I'm going to take a break and during that break I'm going to pull out the other models. You don't need to watch me rummage through those boxes as well as these boxes. And what I'm going to try to do is find the floor, find parts that aren't as badly warped and just trade them out. Yeah, and I'm, I'm going to do a post, uh, a post break flip for you guys for being so patient as I work through this all. Right? Anyway, lots of little parts, lots of detail on the parts, lots of really bad mold marks on the parts. It's like this, okay? Let me just show this to you. So here are doors. And not only did they print in doors, but they printed in the hinges and the handles, right? But here, these circles are not part of anything. They're not clocks or anything like that. They're just raised parts 
of plastic that are there because the mold put them there. And they look terrible. It looks stupid. And so what really needs to be done is I need to get a file or some sandpaper and rub those out. Okay. The same thing here. We got these circles. These are not a part of the submarine. Right? They're just there to just be wrong. And here too. There's four of them. So when I get back from break, if I can find the pieces that I'm looking for that aren't warped, I will switch them out and then start prepping pieces and relaxing painting submarine version really has nothing to do with painting sometimes it just has an awful lot to do with uh, park prep <laughs> but painting think about that we've got uh, like this right the instructions say paint this white well obviously not there's there's pans there those need to be painted copper there's cupboards there's uh, like a little sink faucet, okay? All those details really are calling out to be um, to be painted well. Even when they're tucked way in the back of the submarine, I'll know they're there and you'll know they're there. Then they need to be detailed. They call the little condiment boxes things cabinet handles so you know this is going to be just as bad as not worse than some of the minis but then there's the other question of okay so you got these this hanging meat is uh, what color should that be painted I'm not really sure I doubt anyway yes break I'm going to take a break we'll be back uh, hopefully with parts that are not as badly mangled as these and I'm going to um, see if I can get this done I, th I think you'd like to watch some relaxing painting if at all possible as opposed to um, not relaxing sanding Okay, so that one worked okay. I'm getting ahead of myself here. This is where I filled in the holes. Okay, I'm going to wait till after break when I, and I'll do it when I said I was going to do it. Sorry about that. Just wanted to see if it would work, and it will. So I actually will be able to paint this side of um, of the bulkhead yet today and insert it into the submarine hull. That would be good. I'd like to have that done, and then the um, the sail or the conning tower will actually have been done as well. Looks like that's holding. Holding is good. Tweezers have weird. The escape hatch keeps rotating for me. I don't know why that is. I'll mess with it later. I need to take a break. Okay, be back in about 20 minutes.
we're back. It worked. Um, okay, so um, what we have here is alternatives. So this is this is one of the reasons I bought three of these things. When I bought them, they all said parts have not been inventoried. We cannot guarantee whether or not everything's here. And it, right now. The one that I'm working on, which was the one that was not glued or painted the most, okay, the the one that was a good starting point, um, seems to have all the parts, which is kind of shocking. But as we saw, they're not in really good shape. So I bought another George Washington, and I haven't used that one yet because uh, they started gluing a lot of things together. Well, but I also bought one. And Ethan L. This is a later model. Okay, uh, parts of it are slightly different. Primarily the missile launch area. Um, it's just built differently than the George Washington one. But everything else is pretty identical. So what I can see here is, when you can see it was molded in a different colored plastic. But since this will be primed and painted, that won't matter. But what's most important is that when you compare the two like this, okay, um, yeah, it's, let's just say it is definitely straighter, right? So this is going to go into the Ethan Allen box, and the Ethan Allen one is coming out to the George Washington. And then the same thing is true, the deck above it, this is the control deck. This one is a little bit warped, but you can see there that it's a lot less warped. So this one stays and that goes into the Ethan Allen. And then it was this, you would think, okay, why that? But uh, the identical part here is um, also slightly warped. It looks like everything decided to get warped. But if you compare the two, Okay, you can see that it's definitely less warped. So, <clears throat> the advantages of having uh, multiple copies. Um, there, we can see it. I can. I don't have to try to heat and unwarp these parts. I can just throw them into this box, and I'm not sure what I'm going to do with the extra ones. Mm, these sell for on eBay for, I don't know, like 25 bucks as is. Because a lot of people who are trying to build them end up with stuff like this. You know, they end up with parts that don't fit or are missing and things like that. Um, so these parts are better. They're not perfect, but they're definitely better. And so these are the ones that are coming onto the George Washington when, I, when it gets built. This part comes later. This is part of the control room. Um, so, I don't know. I'll probably set it over here so I don't lose it. Uh, yeah, I found a little box. This little box is going to be the container for a lot of these parts. Because they're little and they're going to get lost. We will put them in there, especially a little coffee urn. That's definitely going to get lost somewhere along the line. These other parts are big enough that I can just leave them in. Oh, can't forget the hams. These are big enough I can just leave them in here. Right? Not going to get terribly much lost. Um, but these will, and also the tables and chairs need to go in there once I cut them off. But, um, I don't know, maybe I'll just do that now. There's one of the chairs. This, see that spec? That is a chair. And there's 11 of them here. So I'm going to try to cut these off. And what's probably going to happen is that they're going to go flying, right? So I'm going to aim them, hold it down, and cut. It's two, three, four. Good. 
six. These six here. There. Seven, eight. It's like the captain's table or something. Seven, eight. And 11. I don't know where the others... I know two or three of them go up on the next deck. And there's four left. And maybe they'll go on the next deck. At least I think so. And let's take the tables off. This is the small table here with the chairs. Officer's table. Whoa, okay, that was bad. Okay, so didn't cut myself. That's a start. So we got five of these, five of these long tables. Got the short table, and got eleven chairs. I probably should get yet an even smaller container to put inside the small container to hold the chairs. I'm going to put the chairs, the, I'm going to put the tables in here. I'm going to take one of the stairwells out. So, depending on how things go the rest of the stream, what I'm hoping to accomplish then, uh, the rest of the stream today, is get this done. This is the torpedo room, okay? And that means cleaning up the back, uh, sanding these down, these places where I filled in the holes, and painting the walls, okay? And this one is going to be like an ivory color. That's the bathroom. This one's light blue. That's the color of the dining room. This one is this dark gray color, and there's just like dust and stuff all over it. So I'm going to start by taking this little piece of sandpaper here and I got two of them done and I'm going to get the uh, get the others finished. And then I'm going to wash off the dust. The tiniest little hole here. That actually was a puncture wound from the other side. And this just made quite a mess, didn't it? Uh, yeah, so we'll take our paper towel get it slightly wet. See the detail on the door here? I got the little door handles in the window. That's pretty good, huh? The part of the trick for this is um, and I'm going to see what I can do is that the um, 
the floors go across here. But up here, it's like here and here, and it's really hard to tell. Here, the boundary isn't isn't too hard. Um, these things are on the bottom, so this will show. So this needs to be painted the same color as this wall. But above it, <laughs> it's a little bit hard to see. So what I'm thinking of doing is um, putting a, like a toothpick across, okay? Like that. Maybe even sanding it down a little bit. Um, it's kind of the width of the floor. So if I, the floor is going to set on top of this like this. So if I use a toothpick and paint down to it, you know, not any, f a little bit further than that, maybe, but not too much further, um, that that might work. I'm not sure. But I guess I'm going to paint the top one first, this one here. I'm going to have to paint around the toilet paper rolls and the toilets. It's a little detail. And, um, kind of paint down to, but not over. It's easy to tell here and here, right? It's that middle area where it's really hard to see how far down to go. Can always scrape it off a little bit, but um, I want to, I want a more or less straight line. This toilets very nicely sit right on the floor there. And the toilet paper rolls, it'd be nice if they were whiter, wouldn't it? It's like the, the paint kind of faded on them. Um, but maybe when I paint the ivory, in this nice bright white. So why not? You know, I'm messing around with stuff. I'm just going to do this. That's it. Knock this all over. Okay, it's still holding. I'm, I'm white. I'm brightening the TP. Right? Why not? We're going to do a relaxing painting. We might as well make sure that the TP is visible. Sand some of the paint off of that. What color was that? That was um, really dark field blue. Since I've got a little tiny brush out and I haven't made a mess of anything yet. I'm just going to shake it up like this. I'm hardly using any of it. So I'm not going to bother stirring. Um, get a tiny touch on the tip of the brush here and touch up that part that I untouched a little bit earlier. There we go. Okay. Um, so the color I was going to use for the bathroom wall doesn't work. It's just, it's like too viscous or something. It, um, it doesn't cover. And so I'm going to use ivory, which is almost white. It's just slightly yellowish off-white. And there, I mean, it's a bathroom, right? That seems to be appropriate. So what I'm going to be doing is um, painting with a little brush around the TP rolls and the toilets. Okay. And those will probably leave a little brush marks. And then the rest of this, I'll use a bigger brush. 
and I'm try to get it even. Ugh. Oh, come on, Greg. You know, what I just did, of course, what I did was I, um, I pushed against these, and now they're all wiggly and moving around. I just stuck my thumb on them, right? And now it is doing exactly what I didn't want it to do, which is sagging. Because I, I loosened them up. I just basically, I broke my, by being uncareful here, as I was showing you this, I basically broke something that was the bane of last week, Wednesday. I mean, seriously, I did. It's really not good. It's almost like I should take this apart and start over. <laughs> oh my, it's just... Why is the submarine cursed? You know, the thing I really want to flip, I just want to flip this whole thing, this whole torpedo thing. Just, I just want to flip it off. It is the most awful thing. Okay, I just need to not touch anything anymore. Wow. Just amazing. Okay. I, um, I can't believe that I just reached over and pushed against that, and it's just barely hanging on. The cement points on this are not good. Okay, I'm going to try to do this without touching anything. You know, I'm going to get it in the submarine, and then I'm going to smash it. Almost uncert almost certainly, uh, somehow or other, as I put the rest of it together. But this is the color. Ivory is what I want to be using on the bathroom wall. Wow, that was bad. It, I mean, I got it fixed, it's set. I was happy with how it looked, and then I smushed it. I'm hoping that the consistency of this paint will work for me. I haven't used it in a while, and it's it's been pretty good so far. I've been using it, but we'll see. I'm going to... Okay, it doesn't look awful if I don't mess with it, if I don't touch it in the wrong places. So what I'm going to be attempting to do is paint around the TP and the toilet and in between here. same time not sticking my fingers in places where it will break stuff. But one of these other models was started 
I mean, one was started with painting. The other one was being was started by gluing together without painting, because I think somebody s just figured there there's no way they're going to be able to get the painting done. And maybe they were right. I don't know what they used as cement, but it was, they used a lot of it. And now that I'm messing around with this, I'm understanding why. Because the parts just didn't hold, right? They just didn't hold. Yeah, um, the George Washington submarine is officially cursed. Every time I think I'm getting somewhere and it looking okay, it falls apart or breaks or something. Something untoward happens. do this toothpick thing I was talking about. I want to see if I got the paint down too far or not. Just, just barely, right? So the problem with the little brush as I'm edging around is that um, you just get this unevenness of color and it almost ends up, it, the paint either kind of blobs up a little bit or you have to maybe try to put a second coat on. where you put just a little too much paint on and hope that it levels itself, right? Okay, I'm going to just put that in there now and take out a larger brush. Try to maintain some decent paint control here. But I just want to make this even.
Initially with these colors, I'm not painting large flat surfaces like this. You know, they're just, they're painting little minis. And so we'll see how that ends up. It may need a second coat, which will then be applied very carefully, no doubt. Torpedoes, I don't know, I managed to push them back into place, and if I don't mess with them, they're not going to go anywhere, which is good. Now I'm going to set that and let it rest a second. Because the colors are going to be adjoining each other, I'm not going to paint the middle one yet. What I am going to do is I'm going to paint the bottom one, repaint it basically. It's already been painted, but it's uh, it looks scabby now. And as I'm doing that, I'm going to be using the same color that is used for the cutaway of the hull. I'm going to take this guy back, okay? And these edges here, see these edges of uh, the decks, these need to be painted this dark gray. Carefully remove the tape. You think that these pieces don't go flying all over the place. Okay, and then... Um, after I'm done painting this, the dark gray, touching up these little spots and everything, um, I'll be using the same color and touching that up. And we'll see how this looks when it dries. It might level nicely, but it looks like it'll need a second coat. It's not covered enough here. Right underneath this toilet, right where it will show. the dark gray. This whole thing is so screwed. We really should pull those out and re-cement them. You know, that is what I actually should do. I won't I'll let this dry. Um, it looks a little scabby. It will need a second coat. I'll definitely do that. In the meantime, I'm going to get out the dark gray. I think I can stand it like that. Yeah, okay. It looks like the rest of what I'm gluing together is just like it glues down into a surface instead of, like, hanging off.
the inner liner of the cap stuck to the bottle. This could be a mess. There we go. We're having another lesson in what not to do when you're building a model. The texture of this, I thinned this out last time I used it, and I think that helped. That went on pretty smoothly. This is drying nicely. It will need a second coat. I think I will maybe do the blue first, just so that I can see how that works. But this, that worked okay. This gray paint worked okay. I don't want to use the big brush on this though. I'm gonna use a, uh, a smaller brush. This one might work. I'm trying not to touch anything, because I have learned today that touching things breaks things. And what I'm doing here off camera, I move the camera without knocking everything over, only a few things, is this is a cutaway hull, right? And so the cutaway part is uh, painted this gray color. Will make it look better than it looks now. See the improvement already? Yay. I wasn't sure what to do with the stairwell here whether that should be painted this dark gray or not. On one hand, it's a cutaway. On the other, I'm not sure. Let me paint the rest of it, the rest of these, um, and then see how it looks. decide whether to make it gray or not. So this is, this is, you're getting some painting in, getting a little bit of painting with relaxing painting. Kind of hoping that the bathroom wall would cover in just one coat, but you know, I hope spring's eternal, right? What you say? Now that I'm looking at it, it looks, it really, I still don't know if that staircase should be painted the gray color or not. I'll look at the box top and see what they did with it. They painted their cutaway white. 
kind of an off-white color instead of this dark gray. I'm using this because this is the color that the hull of the submarine will be. Definitely an improvement over the little bits and different colors of paint that were on there before. Painted it the color, the cutaway color. I'm thinking, I'm just thinking it will look better. That green just jumps right out and it doesn't look right. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna paint over it with the dark gray. Yeah, that's that is better this way. Down to, but not onto the floor here. That little, tiny little spot. But yeah, that was the right decision. And to paint that the cutaway color. This is going to be painted the dark gray as well. The top here, and it's the top of the hull. And the whole hull will be dark gray. And since I have this color out, these guys up on top here, I'm painting the whole color, you know, instead of um, chrome because you don't you don't want them to be sparkling in the sun when you're on when your snorkel sticking out. Paint has been worn. Well, that's, that's an improvement. That looks pretty good. Just a reminder, these pieces somehow uncemented themselves. Some little spots way down in there that need to be painted green. I'm not sure if you can see it, but it, the color just got worn off a little bit. So I'm going to, since I'm messing around with this, <clears throat> trying to make it look good. I'm going to get the green paint out again and a little brush and just touch those up without touching anything else. Ha! We'll see if that's possible. So if you can see this, this is the uh, the bathroom and, and it definitely needs a second coat. What I found with most of these paints is that a second coat, you know, it just makes it look, it just, it works. Okay, I've done that with the green before too, it is the second coat. Covers up the inconsistencies and it usually levels pretty well. To paint the blue first and then do the second coat because if the blue covers then it'll actually be done just take a chance and do that 
Um, yeah. This is what I'm working on here is the back bulkhead here. <laughs> so the bathroom is supposed to be pink, but it's actually going to be ivory. But you can see the dining room <clears throat> is uh, blue. This way. <clears throat> that was really bad. <clears throat> okay. I had uh, tissue, uh, paper towel with some wet paint on to get it. Yes. Never did my post break flip. I failed my audience. So one thing about this submarine is that uh, it's requiring so much attention, and I have to keep telling you what I'm doing and why it's not working, and so on and so on, that I don't get to talk about like '60s cartoons and stuff like I do when I'm. Um, Painting uh, dungeon tiles, which don't require the same sort of attention to detail, and at the same time, don't turn into such epic fails like this kind of stuff is doing. Anyway, the color I'm using here is uh, light blue. See the kind of texture and coverage we get with this. Well, I'm getting a pretty good uh, rave effect there. It was working in. Weird color effects on my hands. It does not look like that in real life. Weird. Okay, that was kind of scary weird. Um, so with this blue, the blue goes under here. And I need to cover that and up to the line around the door that's the most touchy little part and the uh the grate there it's a like a ventilator <clears throat> so, like i did before what i'm gonna do is use the little brush to paint around the detail okay and then I'm going to use the larger brush in an effort to not have quite as many brush marks. The floor goes right across the top of this. Stick your fingers in the torpedoes. Just trying to mark a line here. Top of this is where the floor is. Okay. 
we can actually go above that a little bit because the floor sits on top of that. put my head magnifiers on for this, but I didn't. same thing is true down here is that the floor about this thick goes right across here so like around the top here I want to make sure the blue goes up high enough Kind of okay. I'm gonna get a bigger brush out now. Where did I keep putting it? There it is. And uh, try to get the paint even. to get blue paint where I need a gray. Oh, 
do a little gray touch up. Yeah, but it's it's right on the edge there. And that part needs to be gray. Hmm. Yeah, great. I was doing pretty well and then I got it right over the top of the door frame. After I had very carefully not gotten it onto the door frame. Hmm. Okay, well, I just say that uh, my efforts to avoid brush marks has turned into a mess. I need to get this gray out, whatever color that is. I don't remember. I think it's light gray. Get the blue gray out again and touch up the door frame. And then I need to get the dark gray out and touch up these spots here, which will show below the floor. <laughs> Well, that was my foray into light blue. There's some pretty bad bush marks there in my effort to fix them. Anyway, that's going to dry. I'm going to put a second coat of the ivory on, on the bathroom. Um, I need these brushes. So this ivory color needs to be second coated. The uh, I need to do some touching up with the light gray and the dark gray. And then I need to look at the torpedoes one more time. Let's see if they are more or less acceptable. Well, I'm waiting for that blue to dry a little bit. Just to be clean. Because I'm going to be using the ivory and I don't want the blue to be coming out. So let me get uh, let me get this other solvent out. This cleaned up too. We need the light gray and a deep sea blue thing. You know, if this keeps up this way, I'm just going to give up on, I don't know. Um, let's see how submarines go. This kind of looks scabby, doesn't it? It's kind of weird looking, 
but that's because there's three different decks there. And each one is a different color. Yeah. Okay. So what I'm going to do next is um, I'm waiting for that to dry a little bit further. And then I'm going to do some touching up here and here and here with three different colors. But while I'm waiting for that, there's a gap here where this almost, almost, but didn't quite fit. And I'm going to use this plastic putty. This is all going to be covered up later. And I actually knew this was going to have to happen, but the gap is a little bigger than I thought it was going to be at first. Anyway, uh, these parts don't fit very well. And so there's this gap here. This whole thing will be painted this dark gray color, the hull color. But the gap needs to be filled in and then uh, sanded. So I'm going to use this plastic putty and run a bead into the gap. That will harden. Yeah, the parts the parts aren't even aligned. So this will require not just filling in but contouring. to set for a good long time because I'm not going to get to this until near the end of the entire submarine. So I was waiting for some paint to dry that I might as well just get that on there. Anyway, um, you can see the inside of the, the conning tower or sail and it actually turned out okay. These things still move. These still move. Um, the parts are kind of holding on. Oh yeah, there was some green in there that I needed to touch up. Way down inside there, there's some spots that need a little bit of green paint on them. So I probably will do that right now while I'm thinking of it. And then I'm going to set that aside. somewhere out of the way. I'm hoping I can reach in with this brush and just touch those spots that need the tiniest little bit of green paint. Now you can hardly see them. They're under the staircase. Way down there. Did that without getting a mess. It's kind of a shock. Okay, so I'm going to declare this. Declaring this as good as it's going to get until I work on the outside later. Okay, the blue is getting dry enough. I can do the little touch up. 
I'm going to do the touch-ups and then I'm going to do the second coat. So I need the neutral gray. The neutral gray is for the hatch door here. Paint across the top. that and then I need the deep the really dark blue and that's this color I used this a little before let's make it that much just I need a little Little dots here, and you can see it's right, right along the bottom of the uh, grate here. And then I need the dark gray again. I'm going to stir a little bit. And what happened here is that um, if I use the toothpick trick, you can see this is where the floor lays across like that. Okay. You can see the little bits of blue there. In fact, I might just use this. Yeah. So this needs to be touched up right there. <laughs> yeah, I learned my lesson last time about grabbing that with my fingers. Another lesson I learned is that when you get a tissue covered in paint like this, um, don't grab it. Take it to the trash. Immediately. Did it go up too high? Let's try the toothpick test. Yep. Make sure you grab 
make sure you smush your fingers onto the torpedoes. Yep, just like I did last time. Make sure you do that. Gonna have to re-cement those somehow. Sure how I'm gonna do that? Mm, but they're they're just really loose. They're not even attached anymore. I think I'm gonna have to take them out and redo them. But that is uh, something I'll need to do. I was done with those. That was my nemesis of last Wednesday. But, okay. I mean, I can. It isn't going to be a disaster to pull those out and re-cement them. But they, they definitely need to be done. Um, but first, I'm going to put a second coat onto this what now is a kind of scabby looking um, bathroom wall. And I hope this looks better once it's done. I care about the torpedoes anymore because they're going to have to be redone. Okay, that's going to look better. I'm going to take this little brush and just touch up tiny little bits around the toilets and the TP. Get the color consistent.
Not even stop trying to paint over the shadows. <laughs> okay. Well, that second coat makes it look a lot better. The blue covered pretty well. I'm okay with it. The gray is done. So other than the torpedoes, maybe having to be re-cemented. Yeah, I mean, they're just, they're just not working. So what I think I'm going to end up doing is I'm going to take, take them out and I'm going to start at the top. And just do one and just make sure it's on and then locate the rest of them in relationship to that. It's, I think that's the only way that that's going to work at all. End up needing a third coat. We'll see what it looks like when it dries. It's a little bit streaky, but it might be... It might just be okay. So the, with these torpedoes, um, what's going to happen is they're just coming out. Okay. It's coming right out. There we go. And the bottom one, too. I'm going to clean those holes out a little bit. Touch up the paint. And start over. And I think part of what's wrong is that the um, they have these verticals on them. I think that vertical needs to go right up against the wall and the holes aren't deep enough. So I'm going to actually sand down these extension plugs here so that the thing fits right up against it. Okay, if that makes sense, that these will be shorter by about as deep as the green is so that the these verticals are right up against the wall and if these are against the wall i'll show you here if they're like against the wall and you can see how this is okay you can see how these things are a little too too long they're just really positioning if those are against the wall then actually i could put tiny little bit of cement on each of those and that will hold it um, vertically and uh, horizontally. So these guys need to be redone. Then I'll need to get out my little drill here, clean out the old cement, touch up the green. the green right away while I'm at it. But that, that was, um, I don't know, just one of those things where the way it was put together doesn't work. to be rethought. This turned out okay. 
I mean, the bathroom is not perfect. Um, We're a little bit on this toilet, so I might touch that up. I think I used dark aluminum for that. What have I got? I got uh, 15 minutes yet. I'm going to do that touch up. It's kind of back and forth on the little bits of paint. Not satisfied with how the top of that toilet looks. I don't know if you can even see what I'm talking about, but if you look at the toilets from the top, this one looks fine right there. Okay, but these. A little bit, uh, the ivory paint got onto them a little bit too far. And when you're looking in on them, you'll, you'll actually be able to see that. Mm. Yeah. The other fail detail that I've got going on here. That makes a difference a tiny little bit. Okay, well, that might be about as good as it gets. I'm not sure if I want to put a third coat on here. Um, I'm guessing not. It already looks kind of knobby, and there's little brush marks that show around the toilets and stuff. Um, so it's going to be that's as that is now as good as it is going to be. These will show. This is going to be against the floor. So I need to um, I, re I need to redo these uh, some these uh, torpedoes. It's going to require a little bit of re-engineering, I think. And actually, since I've got some time, um, I can either start cleaning these parts up for the next section, like the bunk room. But I think I want to eventually get done with this. So I'm going to start by finding a file and actually filing down these, the backs of these. I'm going to be playing around with these until they... I just want a little bit of a protuberance on there, just for location, because it's causing more harm than good right now. But I think that if these these vertical bits here are actually touching the wall, that gives me a chance for them to align, as opposed to just dangling off of these tiny little bits. So I want these to stick out just far enough that they um, position it and provide a little bit of a surface for the cement. 
but not so far that they're keeping this vertical from making contact with the wall, which is what was what has been happening. Position and C. big all of it because there's paint on them I guess I can just touch up the paint if I need to try to um, make them smaller on the side you can't see see if that like that if you can see it now it actually makes contact with the wall and when it makes contact with the wall it um, there's a little bit of support for it Needs a little bit of paint touch up here. Sorry, I'm just messing around with these because it's really it's driving me crazy. Um, remember, I think it was this was the color I used. Better check my color chart. Yes, it is. There it is. You know, this is just driving me. This is driving me to the distraction. These stupid torpedo racks. Starting over, if this goes in here like this, and the verticals make contact with the wall,
go in just yet a little bit. A little bit further in. They both don't want to go in at the same time. I'm still playing with these. I haven't broken anything locked yet. Nap one of those on. It's a little bit surprising, actually. That actually has a chance of, uh, it doesn't wiggle left and right very much anymore, that's good. That, that actually has a chance of working. Um, yeah, I pushed the hole through on the other side again. I'm gonna have to, do, I don't know. And a little bit of time left. I'm, I'm going to mess with this and hopefully not, not hurt anything. I'm going to be, I'm going to scrape a little bit of paint off under here. making a contact surface here. A little bit on the bottom and the back of this hole. And then the uh, one I've been working with here. Okay, I'm going to attempt this. This might go a little long today, but I'm going to see if I can get this to work. Seal up on me again.
Igen. That's it. That's all the contact surface I have for this entire torpedo thing. Just those little spots in the back. That's it. <clears throat> hold this in place for two minutes. Okay. Well, I'm holding this I'm going to um, talk about Dyson Dungeons because we're going to be wrapping up finally with Submarine Wednesday on Friday. No, nothing's fitting. Things fell apart. The paint got goopy. Um, but it's it's a submarine, right? So there. So basically, I had to take. You know the torpedo racks that were a disaster last week, Wednesday, that I couldn't get to work? Well, they stayed a disaster, so I, um, I took them off, and I'm trying a new technique. I'm modifying them a little bit so that they have more contact with the bulkhead, uh, so that they will hopefully stay in place. Anyway, yeah, I need to hold this in place here for like two or three minutes at least. And then if I let it go, I hope it stays put. Maybe what I should have, you know, contact cement is, it grabs right away, but it stays flexible, so it's weird. Anyway, I cut down the pins that fit into the bulkhead so that these verticals make contact with the bulkhead giving it a little bit more lateral and vertical support. And I'm hoping as a result of that, that it, this one will stay in place. If this one stays in place, then I'll do the other two. If not, well, I'll just keep poking away at it, I guess. Yeah, so this submarine has turned out to be, like I said, it's almost like the real thing in that uh, it's taking two to three times as long and although the money involved isn't the same but just consider this to be huge cost overruns okay and then i think that that it would give you the impression of a good impression of what we're actually accomplishing here i did get the conning tower put together i'm satisfied with how that turned out the pieces are fitting more or less they're working more or less they look not too terribly scabby. They are not cemented into place, but they are staying. The cement seal broke. Yeah, see, that's the thing is you hold it in place and then let it go. And then it sticks to your finger as you pull it away. Get it from the top here. actually aligned pretty well. It's to be held yet for a while. The important thing here is of uh, the vertical matching the vertical of the bunk, otherwise it looks like they're sagging and weird. Once, of, once one is in, I can line up the others with it. This stuff takes a long time to set. And I would use super glue, but then it grabs right away. And there isn't any time to make adjustments, which is what I've been doing. So I'm going to hold this for another couple of minutes. 
Uh, if you have joined us today, it was Summering Wednesday on Friday. The saga of everything going wrong with the submarine, which I was not expecting. I thought everything would go really quickly and wonderfully today because this piece was in good condition. Um, the conning tower, the pieces I fit together yesterday and they worked. Uh, but that didn't turn out to be very well because they came unglued. This had to be taken apart. I did spend a good deal of time finding pieces for the mess deck and the bunk deck. They are all going to require a huge amount of sanding and filing before they're usable. Just pretty amazing how poorly they were they were done. Uh, this this might be holding okay. meant. So Dyson Dungeons, Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, 10 until 2, relaxing painting or not relaxing submarine building. I'm not quite sure what I'll be doing on Monday. I might be working on minifigs again, and even though I don't find those terribly relaxing, they are better than this. Wow. <clears throat> yeah, this submarine has been quite a challenge. Quite a challenge indeed. Why is that part I touched up not staying touched? Well, I'm not quite sure if that's perfect, but I can say that that is better than anything I have had before in terms of uh, looking okay. Yeah, I just touched up a bar spot and then uh, looked at it again. More needing to be touched. So that seems to be staying in place. And I think that if I... This maybe? I'm not quite sure which orientation because this is still not set. It's still soft. I think the paint is dry enough that I can just set it like that. Okay. Uh, 10 until 2, Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. I will be doing submarine again on Wednesday. And um, at that point, Depending on whether I decide to do these other two torpedo racks between now and then, I'm not sure. I'll probably be spending most of my time, if you don't mind, um, <clears throat> cleaning up these these parts, like all these mold marks, like this. Like this whole thing needs to be filed down, like that. So I'll be, maybe, maybe, since all I'm doing is filing plastic like this, okay? Maybe what I'll be able to do is talk about, uh, like, 60s breakfast cereals or something again. But there's going to be a good deal of this, getting rid of mold marks. And, uh, you know, these parts just, they don't even come close to fitting. So this is kind of what you'll be seeing next Wednesday. It needs to be done before I can even prime them. These parts are virtually unusable, the way they came off the trees. And they're going to require just a lot of uh, cleaning up and scraping and modification like this. Cutting excess plastic off, um, filing it down, sanding it. Okay, just a lot of this before they're usable. And so, yeah, I hope you find this relaxing because it is it is what I need to be doing to be able to even begin 
uh, putting these together. And as you saw before, painting these bunks is a little bit of a challenge because the frame needs to be painted and then the sheets and the sheets need two coats. See this? This is going to be Submarine Wednesday next week. Cleaning up parts. And like on this side, I don't know if you can see it, but it's it's really uneven, right? And so it needs to be filed down so that it's even. Fortunately, it's fairly soft, so it files quickly. And it's hard to hard to mess up this at this stage. This kind of filing, it's just getting the mold marks out of the way and um, the flash that's on there done, like this side is done. It's surprisingly uneven. And then you get the bottom, and the bottom like this, these mold marks, you think you wouldn't see them, but the problem is that it keeps it from um, <clears throat> fitting level on the floor. So <clears throat> this is the thing it goes into. This goes into the slot like this, and you can see that there's this huge gap underneath. You can see it on this side because the bottom isn't even. Right? So, one gets to spend a bunch of time filing these down like this so that it's flat across the bottom. So I've said this before, this model has an incredible amount of silly detail. You know, like the clock face on the forward torpedo bulkhead, or the dials and things, or the, you know, the the uh, condiment cans and stuff in the kitchen and the, in the galley. And then at the same time, the molding of it is <laughs> just incredibly poorly done. So you get this done here and then the other side but this the one side is much higher than the other so it's not just flattening them like flattening them across this way okay but then it's getting this bit along here so that that's not raised up otherwise it still won't fit I'm just gonna do one so you can see how it works making the high side the same height as the low side. So if you remembered um, how it looked before, it didn't quite fit flat to the floor. Now, hopefully, if I put this in the slot, slide. well, it still doesn't fit because the tab doesn't fit into the slot. No, it does, but there's still, it's still rocking, okay? So the bottom is still quite uneven. Anyway, that's the kind of nonsense I need to be working on, is um, getting these so that they fit flat against the floor uh, because of you know, bad manufacturing. Mm. That's a preview, as I'm going slightly over time, preview of next week, Wednesday on Monday. I'll be back working on some minifigs, I think, or maybe other dungeon tiles. I'm not sure. We'll find out. 
but each one of these little bunks is just going to be a challenge until I get them. See, that's pretty close now. As you can see, that's pretty close to fitting on. Uh, if I look at it from side to side, I can see that there's still a little ridge in the middle um, where the, the floor is uneven, but it's pretty close. Let's see how the torpedo is doing now. The torpedo is staying horizontal. Yeah, that worked. Cutting all of that down so that it actually made contact with the wall turned out to work. And I'm going to do a little green paint touch up in here uh, to cover up the shiny spot. Maybe I'll just do that now. Because, you know, why not? If I put another one on, I won't be able to get to it. Yeah, you know, let's see if I can do this without making a disaster. There's a shiny spot where the cement shows. Just want to get some green paint onto that so that the shiny spot disappears. Maybe the shiny spot will be replaced by a brush mark, but I think that would be better than a shiny spot. Okay. So, <coughs> I may have through the process of creative destruction or just destruction period I uh, found a solution to the sagging torpedo racks and it just involved a whole lot more manipulation of uh, plastic but that seems to be it seems to be holding okay good good what I did was I got the green paint on the brown paint because I wasn't careful with my brush. So I touch up the touch up the touch up the touch up the touch up. Ah, when will I stop doing that? Be no end to the madness. So what I was doing is I was touching up little bright spot of uh, where the cement was showing and then I took the brush and bumped it <clears throat> against this thing that didn't need any touch-up <coughs> at all you know it did so anyway yeah this this seems to be working which is <coughs> the practically the only thing that does today <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. I will be back on Monday <clears throat> with more of Relaxing Painting with Dyson Dungeons. Thanks for bearing with me. This submarine continues to be quite a to-do. I got done today. Oh, I don't know. Probably as I usually do. Maybe a th little less than half of what I was hoping to accomplish. This is going to take a lot of work getting these parts to not be a mess. Wow. And I had to borrow some. I had to borrow parts from another submarine uh, because the ones for this particular kit were warped. Yeah. Um, so next week, Wednesday, I'm basically going to be filing and sanding and scraping and getting these parts so that they look okay and that they fit together. And when I do that, and I'm done with that, I'll be priming them. Okay? And um, hopefully that will go okay. It's just stuff like this where they broke off. Rough edges. Oh, there's no end to it, so I need to stop. Otherwise, it will just go on way too long. Thanks for watching. Catch us on Monday. Um, and it will be relaxing painting and not a submarine. So, see you then. Bye.